So we're here to solve this Philomeno variation by Nate Perkins. It's not a variation we've seen before, and it's an interesting idea. It probably is going to lend itself to this puzzle and not a lot of other puzzles, because my guess is they'll tend to solve similarly. But I can see right at the start some key places to begin. A, a thing like a 12 clue near a set of clues that are ones and twos are need to dodge each other. And so one of the traits of this variation, which we're going to be working through, is how to uh, keep similar digits away. And one interesting thing that that actually leaves when we recognize we've now set up a hidden polyomino is some of the ways hidden polyomos can keep growing in size. Uh, this cell, for instance, can't be part of the 12 or the 2, so it's got to be a new shape. And it can't be one or two large because it's touching already those digits. And so we get a hidden polyomino that's at least 3 in size, and it quickly extends over the top to make this 12 go out further. This 12 and this 13 now have to avoid each other, so I've got another hidden polyomino shape that's starting there. It's got to be, actually this one has to be 4 or larger, because all the digits 1, 2, and 3 are taken. And so we get a case where a 12 starts to build in like this, but this 4 has to also keep extending. 4 or larger has to keep extending. This hidden shape now is in three cells, but has another empty cell it's got to connect with, so that's for sure a four. Um, right down here below, we've got a, a six that's got to take at least this cell as it's getting as many as six, and that means these cells, which can't be part of a one or two shape, will have to be part of the same six shape. So that's a quick point of progress there. This two and this 12 need to dodge. And um, I guess we can do stuff on both sides. I'm going to come back to the top just because there's looks like there's a lot to do here with crowding. This 13 still needs to dodge the 12 because of the shared digit 1, and it's got to dodge these 3s because of the shared digit 3. And so this 13 can kind of take this cell, not that cell really, because it's going to strand this. They can't be one or three, but let's even count with that and ignore the, the perfect accuracy here. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, but eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven. It's going to still need to take some more, but at least these. And this starts to form a, a wall across some of these other clues. This two actually now has to be here. So where we were at about a count of 11, we certainly had to take one more to get to 12. Let's come up and think about some of these cells. Here's another hidden polyomino. It's not one or two. It's at least three large. Um, this cell also is part of a hidden polyomino. If this were a three and different from this group, which would have to now be four or larger, we'd get a case where we have three and four stranding the space. This group that has 7, 8, 9 can't take any more cells because it would touch the 13. So these have to be part of the same shape. The cell, which isn't part of the 12, has to be part of the same shape. So we get a lot of progress like this. This would be 7, potentially 8 or 9, 10, 11, 12. So we do have to take this. Um, the minimum I can get when I get out to here is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. If this is 11, I can't take 12, 13. So these are broken apart. And I've got to still take at least two more. So look at that. This 12 has exactly enough space for it. This hidden polyomino, this 4 or larger, has to take one more cell. This 13 has to come like this. So we're getting some good definition of these groups. This 3 dodges this 13, dodges this 13. It's going to look like this. This is going to have to be the two. We have a four or larger group that starts here, comes up. We've got a one, uh, two, three or larger group, now four larger group. We've got a four and a four. These come together. There's an eight as a hidden polyomino. We've still got a lot of the 13 to place. We've got nine cells in the grid. This could be a tenth, but this would be 11, 12, 13. That now forces this three to, to avoid it and come straight up. We've got a little pocket for a hidden two. We still have uh, one more 13 cell to place, which is this one, two coming up here. So we've really done the top, and this is, this is really just playing with crowding and digit avoidance. So the variation is being used with almost every placement, which is nice. But it also means once you're comfortable with the variation, the difficulty of this puzzle is 
probably less than, than some would be. Um, if this 12 took this cell, note that we're going to isolate this cell, which can't be one large and can't be part of the 2 or the 12. So there's a little bit of induction down here that we can do. Um, the thing I see that we really need to come back to is this corner. And that's because this 10 is a large group and it's near 12s, but uh, the one digit and the one digit can't come together. So we effectively have to have the 10 and 12 leaving a, a gap between them. And as we fill this in, for instance, we might think we could take this cell, but we still have to come further out to take more. And even with six, seven, eight, sorry, why am I writing six there? Um, this gets us out to potentially eight if we took both of these cells, but we can't strand this. Um, this cell in this spot doesn't want to be isolated because it can't be a hidden polyomino one. So some of that shape is there. We still have to get enough space for this whole 12 to come. And so I guess one thing to think about is this two. And if this two comes down here, what it's gonna do is put a wall on these cells. And are there 12 white cells left to take over for this 12 group? There are certainly not. And that's even not counting that the six needs to take some more cells. So we've got this shape starting to form. These 12 uh, up here are gonna have to come through a channel like this. And right now we can take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so something like this. Um, this is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's at least taking these cells. Can this and this touch? Well, this is a key cell. This whole puzzle has been about finding some of these spots which are hidden polyominoes, and this has to be 3 or larger because it can't have a 1 or 2 in it. So it actually cuts these apart. And that now says that this, this whole region has all the cells that could be part of the 12 remaining in it. Um, we've taken five. This could be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We can't take these cells. So there are only 12 cells left that are valid for it. And it's going to be precisely limited. The six has just two cells left to finish it. This group's going to end up being four large. This 10 can't come down here, so it's going to have to come over here and finish itself like so. There's a hidden polyomino that starts here and is at least three large. The 6 is going to come down. This 12 is going to come down. The 7 is going to come down. This 7 can't reach all the way over to this group because that would be eight cells. So it could take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but has to take this. So now the 12 is going to keep extending. Gonna have to dodge. It should be pretty clear this 12 and this 12 come together. So we're going to take some of these cells that are part of that union. That now means these clues below are part of the same seven group above. And we'll be able to use that. We still need to get enough cells in this group. It's got six, 10. This is a total of 12 here. If this two took this cell at least two behind, we couldn't use that. We can take the one above and form a three group. That leaves just enough space for a six. This needs one more cell to take a seven. There's a hidden space that grows out to here, form a cell of size five. And that finishes the puzzle. It's, uh, say, it was an interesting, fresh variation we hadn't seen before. It did collide in the space of um, big, big groups that have to stay apart, certainly double digit groups that start with the same digit one. A lot of places where you have common avoidance of that theme, and a lot of twos, dodging twos, and different parts of the grid. So this is likely a kind of logic that's going to be common if, if this kind of style was used again, but it was a fun constraint to play with. It very much drove all of the solve and had some elegant uh, hidden spaces, like how this eight came together up top was pretty nice uh, with two groups of four that were coming together. So thanks, Nate, for the submission. Hope you enjoyed seeing how to solve this puzzle and learn a little bit about phenomenal variations, and we'll see you again soon.